Can we get the white balance back, please? Can I get good white balance again, please? Anybody? Okay. This is gonna be good enough. Um, I have pink hair. I have had pink hair for a very long time, but I dyed my hair pink the first time in 2006, which you can see in these pictures where it's very tightly pulled back so that nobody can tell for the family pictures. And then I did it again next year, and then I didn't have pink hair right up until 2010, where it came back, had pink hair. When did I stop having... When I thought it would stop me from getting a job. Anyway, once I got a job, I immediately dyed my hair pink again. And I have made some very terrible pink hair decisions. All of my hair pink, with the exception of uh, just December of 2018, where I had this part of my hair brown so that I could pretend to be a normal human. It didn't go well. My entire adult life I've had pink hair, and my entire adult life I have had people ask me, how do you get your hair like that? So we're gonna go over how I get my hair like this. I hope you're ready. So yes, my bathroom looks weird. We have one functioning bathroom between everybody who lives in this house. So there's a lot of stuff in it, but um, everybody's complaining about how they need to go to the salon. So here's how you do it at your house. Well, you want your tools, and then you need your product, which is down here somewhere. If you're doing a really bright color like this, you have to do two stages. You have to bleach, and then you have to apply the dye. The dye gets brighter that way. What you need is dot bleach. This is my bleach. This is a cream bleach. It doesn't hurt your scalp as much, and it is way, way easier to work with and you need your developer, this is cream developer. If you don't know what you're doing, if you are bleaching your hair for the first time, you do not want to get 30 volume, you want to get 20 volume. The volume does not affect how light your hair goes. This controls how light your hair goes. This controls how fast you get there. And if you're doing it yourself for the first time, you're not gonna know how to do it quickly. And so you want that 20 volume to give you extra time to know how to do this without frying your hair. I don't think anybody ever needs to use 40 volume, but if you think you need to use 40 volume, always go down a volume from what you think you need when you're starting out. You also want coffee gloves. If you're using a demi-permanent or permanent dye, it's going to have you Mix the dye with the developer, and then you put it on your head. When you're doing bright colors, you don't want to do that because you just get a worse off color. So you want to do bleach and then dye. Um, doing your roots separately is good because this hair, if you're putting dye on it directly instead of bleaching, your uh, hair, this hair is going to bleach more bright than the rest of your hair, and you get a phenomenon called hot roots. Nobody wants hot roots. You'll also need your dye. This stuff is called Eero Eero, and they are really full of themselves on their website. They're just complete assholes, but their product is good, so I still use it despite them being complete assholes. Then you want, what is in my bowl? You want a non-reactive bowl. You cannot bleach in a metal bowl. The bleach will react with the metal. What is Oh, it's toothpaste from when I painted Curtis Connor's face on my mirror in toothpaste. Right. Um, don't ask. So I use a glass bowl. You can buy plastic bowls with measuring lines in it, but I don't like measuring the product volumetrically. I use a kitchen scale. I used to just mix the two until I got a consistency I liked, but I found out that I was using way too much bleach that way. The bleach is expensive, the developer is cheap. Some way to get the product on your hair. This brush has a brush on one end and a parting tool on the other. Of scissors. I got these at the Dollar Tree in 2012 and they are doing fine. The other thing you'll need is some way of separating out your hair. Oh no! My clip broke. You need to prepare your hair for bleaching and to do that, don't wash it for like four days. 
The longer you go without washing your hair before you bleach, the harder it is to mess up and the less it will hurt your head. So use the oils that your head produces to protect your scalp. Don't wash your hair right before you bleach. Don't wash your hair like a couple days before you bleach. If you need to bleach your roots, your hair probably already looks bad, so just let it get gross for two days so that it can look better in the end. You probably also want to be safe and not drink coffee while you do this. I used to, when I was in college, I could do the back of my head without a mirror. And you might also notice that I've not trimmed my side cut down. I've let it grow out for a few days too. If bleach gets over here, and bleach will get over here to have hair protecting it. The bleach is not nice to your scalp. And I would highly recommend going to a place, I get this all at Sally's Beauty, but go to a place that specializes in hair stuff or get the stuff online. I will put links to all of this in the description. But get your stuff from a real, like, beauty place as opposed to getting it at Walmart or something. Nothing against Walmart. I used Walmart box dyes for years. And I switched to this and I was like, oh, this doesn't make my scalp hurt. I always just thought, oh, it hurts when you bleach your scalp to inner lemon rind yellow, but nope. The ratio of bleach to developer that I use is two to one. So I weigh out my bleach and then I zero the scale, and then I add twice that much weight in developer and mix it up. So now that we got that going, it's time to separate out the hair. Okay, so I kept forgetting to stand in frame, but what I do there is I section off a small part of my hair, I paint the bleach onto the roots, and I cover up my root and overlap with my dyed hair by about an inch, and then I paint on the other side of the parting as well, and then make another inch section, I flip it over. This means that the section that I just painted is now flipped over and I can paint the underside of that. Then I do the next one and I just slowly make my way down my head making little partings and painting product on. You can see the thickness that I put the bleach on my head. It's not super globbed in there but you don't need to be stingy with your product here. One of the big advantages of buying a bottle of bleach and a bottle of developer is that you don't have to be sitting there going, oh no, what if I run out of bleach? What if I run out of bleach? And you don't need to buy two boxes and get extra bleach and then dye you don't need. You can just buy the products you need and use them as you need them to. Later on in this video, you'll see that I mixed up more bleach a couple more times because I made small amounts and then mixed it up again. You can also notice that I swapped out my coffee for a cup with a straw because I'm not completely suicidal. So there we go, that's basically it. Just make little parts, paint the roots, and keep going. And that's how I did the entire front of my head. Don't put stuff on your head if you don't know what it is and you haven't read the instructions. What you're witnessing right now is me yelling at the camera for a couple minutes about squeezy bottles versus paintbrushes. You get a much better application a lot of the time with a paintbrush. But the reason I'm getting such a good application with a paintbrush is that I'm using cream dye and cream developer. If you're getting a kit of splat or something like that, it comes with powder dye and clear developer. And that makes a much thinner bleach product that you usually put on via a squeezy bottle. 
It's a lot harder to control and it's a lot harder to see where the bleach is going. I can paint this on like cottage cheese. If you've ever painted cottage cheese on your head, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And you can just get it all over there. You can see where it is. It stays put where you put it. And so that's another reason why, even though I used box dyes for pretty much 10 years, I really recommend getting professional level products. They don't cost much more and it's a lot easier and you get a lot better of a result. So I am utter garbage at being able to look at a mirror held in my hand in a mirror. You know that thing where you hold the mirror up behind you so that you can see the back of your head and then all of your actions are mirrored. I've said mirror way too many times now, but where everything's all backwards now, I can't even do my side cut that way. So I definitely don't go reaching back there with blobs of bleach on a brush and just slapping them on the back of my head. So this part takes a lot longer. You'll notice that the video just got a whole lot faster. But what I do is I do that little one inch part and then I pick up my mirror, I look at the back of my head to make sure that that part is even. I fold that part over my back fingers and paint the top part of it. And then I paint the part underneath the parting. Now I've said part too many times. And then I flip the piece forward, reach down to another small part and I hold it up and I know that I'm getting my partings narrow enough if when I reach back there and make a horizontal parting with the end of my brush and there's just a little bit of bleach already on that section. And back here, I am now using a whole lot more bleach every time that I reach back there with the brush. I've upped my application because I can't see where it is. So again, it's just making little horizontal parts, make a part, check with the mirror, Paint where you think it is, check with the mirror, paint the other part of it, check with the mirror, and then make another horizontal parting all the way down your head. And that's why the bunches on the back of my head are so tight, is so that if I accidentally reach in there with my paintbrush and I'm making the part with the back end and I reach in there with the brush, it won't pull hair out of the other bunch. My partings in the back stay completely straight and I don't grab hair that I don't know where it's been. Because remember, don't grab hair that you don't know where it's been. Okay, so you might have noticed at the very end there, I put the very last of the bleach on my side cut. So the warmer that the bleach is, the faster it will react. Which is why, if you've ever done your hair and noticed when you do all of your hair that your roots process faster, they're closer to your head they go faster, which means when I do my side cut at the very end, I know that it will process slower than the rest of my hair, and it's been on for less time than the rest of my hair. The side cut is sort of a, like, brassy blonde. Uh, that means that I could probably let this dye go for longer, but when I look at the rest of my hair, it looks like it's looking okay. First of all, since I'm putting pink on top of this, if it's orange, it doesn't matter so much. If I was doing green or blue on top of my uh, hair, I would need it to go a lot lighter because I would need to negate the yellow tones. But since pink and orange and red all have sort of red tones in them, if your hair is brassy red, which is what the like yellow color of bleached or improperly bleached hair is. If your hair is kind of that color, it doesn't matter so much with the pink. And also, if you didn't wash your hair right before you did this, you waited a couple days like you're supposed to, um, your scalp shouldn't be like massively on fire. Mine's tingly, but it's not on fire. So we're gonna take a shower now. I'm not gonna film that, sorry. A couple things I forgot to mention. Um, shampoo your hair when you bleach it. Shampoo the bleach out really helps, um, but be nice with it. You wash it all out before you do the shampoo. And it's not shampoo, you're not rinsing out the shampoo. Try to keep your hair stable. And you want to do it with as cold of water as you can tolerate. Um, because your hair is really fragile right now and it's really stretchy. So you don't want to like shampoo it out. You want to rinse, add the shampoo, and then like work it through really gently. You're abusing your hair right now and you need to be gentle with it. All right, couple of shower thoughts we had. Oh, hey, look at that. Um, first of all, when you are washing out your hair, do not 
scrub your scalp with your fingertips, the last thing you want is to make an open sore in your head and then put bleach in it. Uh, don't let the hair run off, get into your eyes for obvious reasons. And when I rinse out my hair, I actually go into the shower with all my hair ties still intact. I rinse the part that's not tied, I remove a tie, I rinse that part. Once you're done, if you are just bleaching your roots and then you're gonna be on your merry way and you're not putting dye on top of it, uh, you're probably gonna wanna put conditioner in your hair. Your hair is gonna be way more porous than you're used to if you're doing this the first time and it's gonna just drink that conditioner up. Um, otherwise, you wanna leave your hair really porous because you want it to drink your color up <laughs> and just consume that like popcorn. Also, don't dry your hair. I squeeze it out like one, two, three, four, all the way down, put it in the towel, let the towel do the work. At this point, I also don't blow dry my hair. I know a lot of people do for time reasons, but you know, it's only 144 right now. I got all the time. I can't leave my house. I've got all the time in the freaking world. Don't put any stress on your hair that you don't have to put on your hair. Just get it somewhere where it's not dripping and then just let nature do its work for a little bit. If you are dyeing your hair a color for the first time, you either want to put the bleach on your ends, let that process for a while, and then do your roots because your roots are closer to your head and they'll process faster. Or do what I do when I'm doing friends hair, it's going to be an all day experience, but do your roots, rinse, dry, let your hair recover a little bit and then bleach the ends. That way you have a lot more control over if your ends are gonna match your roots and that's what you wanna do. So that means you have to do two bleachings. They don't do it like that in the salon because they get paid by the hour in the salon and they wanna keep their costs down to something that people can like actually afford. And we're crooked and this angle is way worse. But um, I need to show you this side of my head and then we'll put you back up on the shelf. After it's bleached and dried, is when I trim my hair. Some people like to trim it when it's wet. I don't recommend trimming it before you bleach because if a bunch of your hair breaks off, that's not going to be covered by the bleach. So you want to part your hair, how to trim your hair yourself. So the secret to trimming your hair yourself is to get your hair exactly where you have it when you're wearing it normally and then grab it and keeping it at that level, bringing it to the front so that you can trim it. Uh, you don't want to put it in a ponytail, you don't want to clip off parts. If you've ever seen somebody cut their bangs and then it's super short in the middle and super long on the sides, that's what you don't want to do. So here I'm cutting just the bottom couple inches off to get all of that fried ends out. And I just straighten my hair, reach behind me, grab it, keep it flat in between your fingers. You don't want to bunch it. Bring it to the front and then I just slice across it and then sort of even out the ends. Uh, this is probably the part where Brad Bondo cries. And there we go. So now you need to take all this hair that you put in your sink, put it in the toilet because the toilet's ready to flush hair. The sink is not. If you get too much hair in the sink, you have to unbend a coat hanger bend it into a spiral, feed it down there, and pull up whatever's in there. And you're not ready to do that. Put your hair in the toilet. Okay, so now we are on the... We're now ready to dye our hair pink. Okay, so you just had a super fun time doing all that bleaching, and you're about to do the same process again with the dye. Um, I'm using a semi-permanent dye here, which does not need to be mixed with a developer to make it work. If you are dyeing your hair a really bright color and you do the pre-bleach and then the semi-permanent dye, that's the best way to get a really bright color. Um, I always think it's funny that the semi-permanent dye is all advertised like, oh, there's no peroxide, we're good for your hair, because the dye itself is, but it doesn't stay on your hair unless you've done something to it to make it really porous, like bleaching it or soaking it in vitamin C powder or something. So it's like if I had a giant truck 
And I said, it's great. It runs on nothing but water. It's perfect for the environment. And you say, all right, Pink, let's get in the truck and fire it up and go somewhere. And I'm like, cool, I need to go shoot a baby seal first. And you say, what? And I say, to turn on the truck, you must shoot a baby seal. But once it's turned on, it's perfect for the environment. I gotta know. It's just always kind of bothered me about that dye. When they say, oh, it doesn't hurt your hair because the dye doesn't. But they know darn well you gotta hurt your hair to make it stick. Anyway, the main difference between applying the dye versus applying the bleach is that if you get a drop of the dye somewhere, it might really stain things. And if you get drops of the bleach on your skin, you'll know because it starts hurting. The other thing is that whereas with the bleach, I overlapped my root with the pre-dyed part of my hair by about an inch, I overlap by several inches on the dye application and then when I finish doing one of the bunches, I comb the dye through part of the way. That means that I end up with dye that is um, more evenly distributed. It doesn't go all the way down to the ends of my hair. I have to do that end application later. But when I'm just going through initially, it gets the dye there. And the combing it also lets me get the hair back into bunches. Because once it's soaked with that dye and so dry from the bleaching, it doesn't want to do anything on its own anymore. So that's mostly it. I don't cover my hairline with Vaseline. I've just found it's not really necessary. Um, sometimes it's hard to get the dye off your skin, but it's pretty easy to get the skin off your face with a good exfoliator. So just let it happen. Don't get it in your eyebrows. Um, and you'll see I get it on the counter and a few things like that. The countertops in my bathroom are 45 years old and they have absorbed everything they possibly can. So you can get semi-permanent hair dye off of them with just a magic eraser and some soft cleanser, so that's not a big deal for me. Um, but that's pretty much it. I'm using the same brush, I'm using the same bottle or uh, bowl. I know what housing equipment is called. I'm a human. Uh, you might also notice that I have armpit hair and nipples, and honestly, if you're upset by that at this point in the video, I'm really not quite aware of what to tell you. Oh my god, this footage is at a thousand times speed, and I still have like three more minutes of me applying the dye, so I don't really have a whole ton of useful things about what to say about this. Uh, you can see once I'm done with all the bunches, I take the remainder of the dye and just slap it on the ends. The ends of my hair for a long time was just complete split ends because I was convinced that cutting off like an inch to get rid of the split ends was going to make my hair look so much shorter and the split ends would absorb more dye than the rest of my hair, so I would always save it till last because I needed that dye to go around because I was buying splat box dye. Uh, the splat pink color actually looks really good, but I recently went back to it just because I wanted that color again, and it was so messy. It was so thin and watery, and I couldn't put it on with a brush, and I didn't remember how to do it with the bottle, so yeah, Eero Eero's big on like, we're good for the environment and we're vegan and propylene glycol is used on boats. Like propylene glycol is also used on like a hundred other things. I drank half a cup of it one time to prove somebody wrong and I am fine, except that I think that drinking propylene glycol is okay. So really, I don't know what you want out of somebody at this point. This video is half an hour long. No one's going to watch it up to this point. We're already 20 minutes in. Oh my gosh. Anyway, yeah, the pink dye goes on exactly like the bleach, except less painful and with bigger consequences if you mess up. And you might notice that I'm getting a lot of dye in my side cut. That's because I'm just going to shave my side cut all the way off when I'm done. That's just how I do my hair. There's not a good way to keep the bleach and the dye off of the side cut. And also it looks really good when it's shaved off all the way, so that helps. Um... Okay, so each of these clips is two minutes long, and I have two more of them, which means I need to fill another, like, 30 seconds of time. Oh, that's so long. Um, I want to thank everybody who's here. I know that this is not what I normally post on this channel. I, I'm not good at this. I have tried to make a How Do You Get Your Hair Like That video probably a hundred times before, because I've always gotten that question, and now I'm just, like making one and I don't even know what to do. Oh my gosh. So, uh, yeah, after this you wash it out. You slap it on the ends and then wash it out. There you go. 
oh good, I filmed myself cleaning up. Here's three seconds of that. So then you let it sit. I usually let it sit for about an hour. The bottle or the box or the jar of whatever your semi-permanent dye is will tell you how long to let it go. Because semi-permanent dyes don't have an oxidizer in them, they don't have a developer in them, it's not going to make your hair fall out if you leave it to sit longer, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be any better. There's not a big difference between hair dye that you let sit for an hour and hair dye that you let sit overnight, except that you wake up and you need to clean hair dye off everything you've ever known and loved. So I just go into the shower and then I don't shampoo the color out. I just worked hard to get that color in my hair. I'm not going to shampoo it out. So I take conditioner and I work it through my hair like it's shampoo and then I put extra on the ends because all of the hair that's super porous that hasn't absorbed the color is still going to want to absorb something and if I'm not careful it's going to be cigar smoke or cat pee. So here's me shaving the side of my head, and if you watch, you see the number of times that I just cut myself open. Um, I don't really, like, shave my legs or my armpits, so I'm not very good at this. So that's that's basically your whole story there. Um, I did one time try to wax the side of my head, and that did not go well. So anyway, there you go. Now we're going to have some slow-mo shots of me spinning around showing off what my hair looks like right now. And that's the whole story.